Hey, good morning, Sunday School class. Uh, we are back talking about divisions in Corinth. Uh, we have three outlines, gratitude for the church, grace in the church, harmony in the church. Let's start off with a word of prayer, then we're going to get right into our lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. Another day we never thought we would see. We thank you for your grace and your tender mercy. What a mighty God we serve. We love you. We thank you for everything you've done this week. Keep us together as one accord. Open our minds and hearts and body and soul that we learn from this lesson and be good example setters. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. So here we are in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, uh, verses 1 through 16. And we are talking about Corinth. And this church has a lot of things going on. Um, you name it, it was taking place. This particular lesson, we are going to talk about division in this church. Um, and uh, Paul is going to write a letter to them and address the issue. All right, let's go with uh, 1 Corinthians verses 1 through 6. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sourced this, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints, with all that in every place called upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you in peace from our God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God is which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Amen. Paul had a unique way of talking to the Christians, talking to the body of Christ. And he, right now, is writing a letter to them to address the issue that we spoke of just uh, a few minutes ago. But he had a, a co-author here named uh, Sorstes. And he was the chief ruler of the synagogue, helping him out with, you know, with the writing up to the church. And one thing about Paul, he loved to address before he go into the issues and everything. He started off being positive, naming some of the, the good attributes that the, the Christians have. And he goes into and talk about how, you know, he prays for them. And he, you know, he thank God that, you know, they have the grace upon them and the peace that God has, has given them. But he also talked about the gifts that God has given them and uh, the, the speech and the knowledge that they have. And he addressing all these positive things that's going, that's going on. And he only had these things through Christ. It's not something that they got to receive on their own. It's only through Christ. Okay, um, Paul really know how to write a letter. Uh, to the Christian body. He should just show gratitude for the church. It's something that we can take upon and and, and we, we learn this as leaders, um, as uh, in your own personal careers, if you have like a department that you over, if you are also leaders, leaders in your church, you start off with the good things first and address that. And then you go into the things that they can work on, which we're gonna to get to um, in a little bit. All right, Christ, grace in the church. Okay, so let's go from um, verses seven through nine. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Grace in the church. Um, God's amazing grace, his tender mercies, and these things that he has given to each and every one of us that's in the church. We all have something to offer in the church. We all have different gifts in the church that's been given by the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's to edify the church. It's to help the church grow together. It's about Christ and only Christ, not individuals. We are to do this together and we're doing it for one person and one person only. And it's the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. One thing I love about college basketball, and I mentioned this before um, to um, the men's class when we were in person uh, teaching Sunday school. College basketball, they have passion. They, they And you can show it because they're playing for the school. They're playing for that name that's in front of the jersey. When you get into professional basketball, you see that they play for the name that's in the back of the jersey, for themselves. We want to be like the college basketball team that's hungry for the Lord, that's hungry to, you know, have that, have that burning passion with them, inside them that burns inside and, and it spills over and, and, and someone can, can um, benefit off of that. And someone can look at it and, and use that as an example of how they should be in, in walking into Christ. That's who we want to do. We want to do this all for Christ. That would limit a lot of division that takes place. Uh, we, we, we see a lot of uh, division that took place in, in, in football. If you watch sports, you know, you see that they have a certain amount of catches they have to have. And then when they get those catches, they get a bonus. Uh, and sinners, if you will. And a lot of times when that takes place, self comes in. And when self comes in, there goes division. You know, uh, they say when there's smoke, there's fire. And, and, and now you think about me, 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 instead of team, team, team. Instead of you thinking about, you know, the bigger picture. And um, we, I get it. You know, you want your money and all this kind of stuff. But it's a lot that comes along with that. Because uh, selfishness will take a part in within the team and division. But here we, we are going to get into the problem. All right. Harmony in the church. We're going to read verses 10 through 16. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there are be no division among you, but ye that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you by the brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, and there are contentions among you. Now this that every one of you said, I am of Paul, I am of Paulus, and I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Least any shall say that I baptize in my own name. I baptize also the house that hold Stephanos besides. And I know not whether I baptize any other. Amen. So Paul is, is getting into the issue that took place in the church. The main reason why he's even writing this letter and addressing uh, the church of Corinth. The vision had taken place and, you know, people within the church, they start having, you know, factions, pretty much cliques. And this group of people love this, love Paul. This group of people love Cephas. This group of people love, which was Peter, you know, the one of the disciples, love Apollos. And it was bragging about who 
was who they got baptized by. You know, oftentimes you see in church, people have their favorite preachers they like to listen to. You know, if the, the preacher, they find out who's preaching for the, the morning service, they they stay home. They don't want to even come, <laughs> you know, or who's teaching. They don't want to attend the class unless it's a certain person is teaching, you know, causing division amongst the church. Um, and Paul is letting them know, letting the ministers know that, hey, look, we are not supposed to embrace these kind of things. We have to show unity with each other and so the church can see it and know that we are are here only by Christ. See, Paul, Paul was only, when he addressed the letter at the beginning, he, he was talking about how he didn't call himself. The church didn't call him. Christ called him. He was appointed, selected by only by Christ. And so, you know, everything is, is, is done in the name of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing that he wanted all the church leaders to have the same mindset. And he wanted the church to understand that as well. Everything they do is, is, is because of Christ. So he was, he was ashamed. He was upset that they, my, they, they way of thinking was, you know, to boast and brag about who baptized him. It didn't matter who boast or who baptized him. It was Christ being, you know, baptizing them. He just using them as a tool to use them as, you know, to, to do the baptism. But they baptized in the name of Christ. Uh, so he, he looked at this and he said, Paul was, you know, very disappointing. He said, I'm so glad that I did not baptize any one of you other than <laughs> Crispus and Caius. Gaius. And, and, and then, you know, he was saying that because of the way they were acting. The way they were, you know, causing all this division. So, you know, in churches, in any relationship, a lot of times it's the little things, the pettiest things that cause division amongst families, church families, relationships, marriages. You find yourself fussing and fighting over the pettiest things that doesn't matter at all. Oh my goodness, I mean, you just look at it. I mean, you can just, you know, you might have an idea amongst the, uh, one of the auxiliaries. And if it doesn't go forth, you're upset. You might leave the meeting early. You might not show up for church the next Sunday or, you know, because you caught up in the situation. Um, you know, the vote didn't go your way. The majority rules. And you might not like it, but if you had to look at the bigger picture. It's not about you. It's about what's maybe best for the church or whatever, you know, is good for the order of the other church. You know, it could be just any and every little thing. You know, they say the color of the carpet. You know, you didn't like the way they picked the, 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 the design of the uniforms <laughs> for the special occasion. None of that stuff matters. The church that prays together stays together. And see, Paul was praying for them. That's why it's important for us when we have our altar call, we have our church leader inside the church and, and we have our, our church leaders, deacons and, and a pastor praying for us. One of the most important prayers you can have is the altar call prayer. That's to help keep Satan out and welcome Jesus in in our invoc invocation prayers that we have. Um, you know, Satan looks to divide and conquer. And when he does that, that's exactly what he does. He, he conquer. People leave the church and bounce from this church and that church. But one thing you must understand, every church have issues. But it's about how you respond to those issues. Are we going to move forward together in one body? And that's what Paul wanted. He wanted no division. He wanted us to have the same mind and be on one accord for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, be we got a church to just 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 focus on that. Look up to Christ and, and and what side are we leaning on? You know, when we get caught up in our favorite teacher, in our favorite preacher, what takes place is we are listening to the 
messenger versus the message. And then we're missing the whole boat. Missing the whole thing. We have to get on that ship of Zion and get off the Titanic. Okay? We have to get real about this thing. Be serious about this thing. And this thing is, it's called the Christian walk, the Christian life. All right? We just had a Super Bowl last month, and and we had the Rams, you know, uh, going against Cincinnati, a pretty good Super Bowl. And the Rams, they looked at, before the Super Bowl happened all week, they was talking about, we doing this for Aaron Donald. We have to do it for Aaron Donald. He's the captain of the team. He's been on this for a long time. We have to win this for Aaron Donald before he retire. Not one time they mentioned we have to do it for myself. We have to do it for, you know, they, 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 they wouldn't think about me. They would think about the captain. The captain of the team. The leader of the team. We have to win this Super Bowl for him so we can get that ring for him. Everybody was on board with that. They actually ended up winning the Super Bowl. Aaron Donald, the team was together. They had some, some battles through the, you know, through the game, but they ended up pulling it off. Class, we have to do this for Jesus Christ. We have to win souls now when we, we get a, we get a trophy when we get on the other side. We have to win souls for Christ. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. We have to do it together. I can't do it by myself. Pastor Cox can't do it by himself. Deaconess Hill can't do it by himself. The deacon board can't do it by themselves. The usher board, the choir, we all do this together. The missionary society. We all do it together. And we're doing it for the name of Jesus. So he can be, lift him up and get all the glory. It's not about us. It's only about him. Let's do it for Christ. In Christ alone. In Jesus alone. And when we have that mindset, it doesn't matter if Brother Davis's idea didn't go across or get passed through. Because at the end of the day, it's for Christ. In Christ alone. All right? Everything we do, we do it for him. Only what we do for him will last. Not for us, but for him. All right? Division in Corinth. We have to look at this lesson and, and it's going to continue on. We're going to be in Paul, Corinth, by the Corinthians. For a little bit and the next lesson is true wisdom all right true wisdom class uh hope you continue to pray and study and let's grow together um i know we we have our problems we have our issues but you know does jesus have to bear the cross alone and all the world go free no there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me and you all right, but we have to do it together. Amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a blessed week. Um, hope you um, do all that you can to grow in the spirit of the Lord. All right, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your protection. We thank you for everything you've done for us this week. We ask you to, to watch over us and continue to look upon the children that go back and forth to school. Father God, we ask you to heal our sick and shut in. We're asking you to bless and give the comfort to Sister Dixon. What a mighty, wonderful servant you have in her. And Sister Dixon, need her right, she needs her right now the passing of her son. Father God, we ask you to just remember everybody on the sound of my voice and people that will listen later. We all stand in the need of prayer. We can't get along without you. Please remember 
my pastor, his companion by his side, Sister Lady Cox, and their children. Remember my church family as a whole. Remember my family. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Class, I love you. Continue to study and pray. And um, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.